Okay, here we are to talk about the LG soundbar. And how did I experience so far? Well, first of all, let's start with the biggest problem. We might as well. It's that subwoofer, or whatever the hell you want to call it, that comes with it. I don't think that's exactly what they call it, but I'm going to call it a subwoofer. It sucks. It's just like everybody said in all the results, it just it doesn't do anything. It vibrates a little when you, you get into a scene with like a gunfight or an explosion, but it doesn't do anything. For what it is, it's big enough to pack somewhat of a punch, you would think. You should be able to notice it vibrate. I'm not talking about something that's in a surround sound setup, but it should be able to pull off some kind of um crazy thing. Unfortunately, it doesn't do a damn thing. It just kind of sits there and vibrates. And I I put went to the back of it and clicked the repair button, maybe to fix it. If I set it up again, it might work different. Then I couldn't get it to connect again. The only way to reconnect it the right way is to turn the sound bar off and turn it on again and then plug in um, the dumb the, the dumb sub dumb piece of junk subwoofer thing, whatever you want to call it. What's good about the both of the units though, the sound bar and the device that you put aside like a subwoofer, is that they both have a plug that detaches from the unit. So if you want to unplug it, you don't have to go behind your television and unplug it. A lot of things require that. With the sound bar, if something goes bad with it, if you ever sent a replacement, um, they'll, they might, you know, they might send you a plug, but um, you don't have to take it out of the, your plug. You can just leave, send the same plug back because the plug already works that you have and everything's all set. That's my main complaint. Another thing I wanted to say is don't bother with the warranties. I don't think you should bother with warranties unless something's extremely expensive. The only reason why I say that is, is because from what I understand, they're not going to do house calls for things like this. They usually do that with TVs. And even TVs, they only do a house call if it's like 42 inches or more um, and, or if you spend a lot of money. But with these little sound, bar, sound bar, um, bars, I should say, they're not going to come to your house and fix them personally. So forget that shit. That's not going to happen. Most likely they're going to make you mail it into their service. And who knows how many weeks it's going to take for them to look at it and see if it works. So you, this, the price range for this was about like 150 You spent, we'll use that as an example. You spent $150 and then your thing breaks. You have to send it out and get it back six weeks later, well, you're going to say, well, at least they'll repair it and send it to you for free. No postage. I, I won't accept that. I'd rather I'd rather lose all my money than pay for something and wait weeks and months for it to be repaired. And I know what it's like, especially with the Geek Squad, so I'm not a fine person of waiting for repairs. So I, I, want, I know that it sounds stupid for me to say that, but that's how it is. Um... The reason why I bought this model and I told people before is that front display has a volume indicator. It has an indicator to tell you what mode you're, um, you're on. Now, you're going to say, well, why doesn't all of them have this? Well, mainly because most people are hooking up through the HDMI arc instead of optical. I use optical because I find it a lot easier. You just plug it in. You don't have to... It doesn't have to have interaction with the television. I don't like it doing that because I don't like everything to turn it on at the same time. I prefer to use all the remotes so I can remember what they look like and how they use. People are so used to using one remote now, they don't know how to use the other remotes anymore. It's pretty pathetic. Um, so... The other ones don't have displays, but they'll display on the television. Like, if you adjust the volume, you see it on the TV. But that's HDMI arc, and you're pretty much forced to use that. And you need special... Let's put it this way. Um, there's only certain kind of modes that can be used in HDMI arc. I learned that the hard way when I tried to hook up everything to my television and send it to the receiver. It couldn't do it. There was a lot of heavy, heavy surround sound modes that would not work. I think it was one of the DTS modes and something else. It just wouldn't transmit to my receiver. Now, you're going to say, well, this is a sound bar. What's the big deal? The big deal is I don't want everything turning on at once and being controlled by one controller. I think people should learn how to use all the controllers and not be lazy. It's not a... People say, well, that's so much nicer to use one remote rather than four or five. 
I don't look at it that way. I look at it as I want to learn how to use all the remotes. That's just how I want to do it. Um, the one bad thing about this thing is that it doesn't have no auxiliary jack like for a stereo like you know headphones in the back. It would have been nice to have something like that. Instead, it has an HDMI in and another HDMI for service or, or something on the back. I don't know what the hell it was. It would have been nice to have something else. Unfortunately, it didn't have any of that. So, um, disappointment right there with um, these um, different things. And um, the quality, you're going to want to know the quality of this thing. The quality of these speakers are pretty good. I mean, people complain, but you know, it's it's not an expensive sound bar. It's like 150 bucks. What do you expect from it? It's not going to pull off any kind of crazy things, but it is very good sound to me. A lot better than anything the TV can offer. Um, <laughs> people might not feel that way, but... um. I think they should all have indicators in the front because, you know, pretty much every soundbar I've seen has optical on it. So if someone is just using optical, all you're getting out of that is sound. There's nothing being transmitted into the in, inside the television. And all, everything's coming out of the television into the, um, the speaker. So if you're using optical um, and you don't have a display or anything you can't tell what volume level you're on and i don't understand how people could be okay with that that's the first thing i looked at when i was looking at all um speakers i kept saying to myself well i was gonna go with the bose it was more expensive and it looked like it probably would have been a little better quality too but then i said to myself there's no volume indicator on the front no one mentions this in the videos and with no volume indicator i can't see what volume i'm on I'm on if I'm using optical. I would have to use the HDMI arc. The arc sucks. I, and another reason, you want to hear another reason why? And this is a legitimate reason. I don't want to take up another HDMI port on my television. Unfortunately, down here we have no choice um, because we use it to send signals such as, um, uh, what's it called? Um, What was it? The, the cable box and stuff. You can port it directly over to the receiver. But um, on this TV, it's just electronics. I'm not going to waste a whole HDMI port on an HDMI arc for a soundbar that can't get more than two channels. I don't know why people are so big on getting all this Atmos and all this stuff on soundbars. When even if you did have the right soundbar, there's no way you could get a true five channels unless you had more speakers. That's why the the Vizio one was a whole big setup, and I wasn't going to do that. Um, so, th that's basically that. I can use that HD HDMI port for different things. Now, certain people, it doesn't really ma it doesn't matter to them because they can use one of their lower HDMI ports. But the, all my HDMI ports are 120 hertz, so like they're the re refresh rate. So I can use them for a lot of things. They're all the maximum. Um, if you have a cheap LED television or something, that's a different story. One HDMI port could be different from another, and and, and if it's, it, you get my you get my drift. So which um um what's it called? Which soundbar would I buy? I think I would stick with the one I am for now. Maybe in the near future I would consider upgrading. I guess eventually at some point. I would have to deal with no volume indicator, but not right now. I think that's stupid. There's no volume indicator in any of these units. Um, and I think it's stupid. You can't look at the back of these units unless you um, go, um, go online. Forgive me, I'm talking too fast in this video. Because when you go to the store, they're all mounted. So you, you can listen to what they sound like. You can hear everything. But the biggest problem is you can't look at the back just to make sure. In fact, there were some websites that said mine had an auxiliary port on it for 3.55 jack for the stereo headset thing. It doesn't have that on the back of mine. It's just an HDMI in and another HDMI for um for service or whatever the hell it was. So, you know, that's false advertising if you ask me. You go to a lot of websites, that's what it says. All right, that's it. Bye-bye.